I'd like to talk a little bit about uh, Walter Schuett. He was, or is attributed to be, one of the early pioneers of total quality management. And by early, I'm talking about uh, in the early 1900s. Walter Schuett at that time worked for Bell Telephone Laboratories, uh, where uh, there was something of a monopoly, but uh, uh, Bell Telephone had to do, you know, had to justify its um, prices and charges and, and quality, same as everybody else had to do. Now, uh, when Schuett joined the Western Electric Company um, as, as an inspection engineer, uh, he was part of the team that was, was uh, intending to uh, improve the quality. And at that time, quality was restricted to, well, you know, we build it and, and you inspect it, and if it passes, it passes. You have this, this whole idea of um, uh, manufacture, manufacture, manufacture built what they built, and you check that afterwards to see whether it was acceptable or not. Now this wasn't particularly um, uh, acceptable to Walter Schuett. He was um, interested in, in uh, why were so many things produced that weren't of good quality in the first place, and why was there so much variation in them? Uh, these these were um, these were the carbon transmitters in the telephone handsets that he was uh, looking at. That's the first thing he looked at. Now, he, he looked at this uh, problem of quality, the, the quality of the things that were produced, in terms of assignable causes, that is, you could find a reason for it, or just random causes, that is, there wasn't any specific reason, it was just a, a, an outcome of the way things were done, so we, what we now call uh, common cause errors. Um, and he, he plotted uh, these things uh, on, on the charts, which we'll come to in a moment. Uh, the first thing he concluded was that errors were not random. Uh, they didn't form a, a Gaussian curve, or a, a normal belt curve, and they, they didn't resemble Brownian motion. They resembled something else. So that was the first thing he, he um, uh, established. Then what he did was he would plot the, um, the characteristic of whatever it was he was measuring on a chart and put in upper and lower limits. So there was uh, an expected uh, value, and there's an upper limit and a lower limit. And uh, sometimes the, the value actually fell outside those limits, and sometimes it was, was within. Now, he, he did this, and it turned out to be an extremely succinct way of expressing the entire problem. That is, you had to measure it in some fashion, you had to measure some, some characteristic of whatever it was you were looking at, uh, you plotted it on, on the chart, and you could then um, have a look at what were the causes of these things, uh, or what were the causes of the outliers, and uh, what was the cause of the variation within the control, and how could you tighten up the control. As I said earlier, we would recognize that now as a control chart. I doubt that in when was it, 19, uh, 1918, I doubt it was called a control chart, and I doubt that it looked as it, as it does now. But it was the beginnings of it, and it's always attributed to Walter Schuett. So he was one of the early uh, pioneers of it, um, and uh, contributed a great deal to our knowledge about total quality management. 